president? The senator from California. Madam President, I ask that the quorum call be dispensed with. Without objection. And I think the managers are aware that, uh, that I'm going to make a unanimous consent request shortly uh, on a bill that deals with uh, members' pay in the event of a government shutdown. And I've been told that we're waiting to see. There's uh, apparently one objection on the, on the Republican side. If we can clear it, then uh, this will be passed. And if not, then I'll be back later to make the same request. I want to say to my friend from Vermont and my friend from Iowa that um, I support the manager's package. I think it's terrific. And I, one of the things in there is uh, a Coburn Boxer Amendment that would keep the patent fees at the patent office. And I'm so glad that the chairman sees it that way because we have such a tremendous backlog. So uh, I, I, I'll be happy to yield to my friend. I just want to ask a question about the proposal that you would make on pay, which is fine with me, but could you not have an alternative in there that we give the money to charity so somebody would actually see it? I mean, this would be a, like a one one hundred thousandth of one percent going into the Treasury. Uh, the last time we had a shutdown, I just voluntarily gave these, or it was $4,000, $5,000, I just gave it to charity. Uh, wouldn't that make a lot more sense that actually people might get some benefit from it? Especially well, the people, who, especially the uh, things like homeless shelters and feeding things and all that, they're going to be hurt by a government shutdown. Why not do something where they would get the money directly? Well, that's, that's a good idea. The, the reason I've done it this way is because I'm trying to say that we, uh, in the United States Senate and in the House, have an obligation to keep the government running, and we should be treated just like other federal employees. And so that's the simplicity of this. We can't force a member to give money to charity well, if, if they wanted to. could actually, by, by writing it, say that either return it to the Treasury or give an equal amount uh, to charity and file with the Secretary of the Senate who they give it to the charity. Well, again, if that's treating us differently than other federal employees, that would be a tax write-off. Uh, for those of us, and uh, you give the full amount. Uh, it's a tax write-off uh, to, to give to charity. Uh, All I'm saying is uh, that's certainly another option we could have if my friend wanted to uh, to change it. I just think in, it's simple. It's simple. We just want to be treated the same as uh, as other federal employees, and that's how I've structured it. But you know, I spoke about this this morning, and. Um, I offered, uh, I wrote this amendment with the support of Senators Casey, Manchin, Tester, Nelson of Nebraska, Bennett, Warner, Wyden, Coons, Harkin, Hagen, Menendez, Stabenow, Merkley, and Rockefeller. And I think there's a, a growing consensus that we want to avoid a shutdown at any cost, and you know, I'm hoping that we will avoid it. There could come a moment where it is forced upon us, and uh, there's lots of stories. Who will get the blame for this, that, and the other? To me, uh, that's not important. What's important to me is uh, that we sacrifice. We here in the United States Senate, uh, in the House as well. And uh, I've, I'm hopeful if we get this done, uh, we send this over to uh, Speaker Boehner, that he'll get it through uh, his, uh, his body over there, and then we can get this done, send it to the President. It also impacts the President, too. We say the President can't get paid either, because the deal is that we have to work with the President, and, come up with a, uh, with a compromise here. So Senator Leahy has a good suggestion. Some people might like that option better. Uh, I feel this should be kept very simple. In the case of a government shutdown, we're treated the same way as, as other federal employees. Uh, the reason we have to do this is members of Congress and the President are paid by a separate statute um, rather than by the annual appropriations process. So we would have to pass a separate statute on this. And um, it's a very simple, simple bill. And um, again, I hope that we never have to come to this where uh, we have any type of a shutdown. But maybe this bill will make some colleagues uh, who feel that they'll be protected from sacrifice uh, you know, we'll, we'll realize that it's painful. 
It's painful for a lot of people. It certainly would be painful if someone on Social Security disability can't get their payment. If uh, veterans who are on disability don't get their check. It's certainly painful if a citizen is planning a trip and can't get a passport, or it's painful if Superfund sites can't be cleaned up. It's painful if there's a, God forbid, an, an oil well explosion because we didn't have people there to inspect the oil well. Um, and for our business people who are government contractors, it's painful if they don't get paid. Uh, export licenses must be granted and our troops should be paid. So there's no reason why we should shut down this government. And I'm very hopeful we'll have unanimous consent uh, to, to do it. And um, I have a parliamentary inquiry to ask the chair. Um, is it true that we no longer have uh, secret objections here? A person has to identify themselves if they're objecting. There are provisions that address people objecting to unanimous consent requests. Okay. So uh, would I be correct if I said that if someone objects, we would know who that individual is so that we can speak with that individual? You said there are provisions. Could you be more specific about that? If, if the senator will hold for a minute. Certainly. We will get the provision and read it to you. I would be very well, the senator grateful. is waiting for that. I'm just senator curious, from Vermont. If I might ask the senator a question. Under Article 2 of the Constitution, it says the president shall at stated times receive for his services a compensation which shall neither be increased nor diminished during the period for which he shall have been elected. And um, would your amendment be constitutional under that, uh, under that provision. I remember that we voted to increase the pay of a president when President Clinton, if I could have the attention of the Senate, when, uh, I know, I know between the time yeah. uh, when President Clinton was in office but did not take effect until President George W. Bush came in and it doubled the salary of the president for President Bush but not President Clinton, but how, how do you, by statute, change, even for a matter of days, a presidential salary? Doesn't it violate Article 2 of the Constitution? We did check this with the legal counsel, and they told us that the legislation as drafted does not increase or diminish the annual salary of the president. It withholds pay during a shutdown or failure to raise the debt ceiling. Um, there are definitely standing questions, and we're told that only the president um, would be able to challenge this legislation in a court of law. But what you're saying is that even though it goes directly against the Constitution, which says his compensation should neither be increased nor diminished during the period for which he shall have been elected, that unless he objected, uh, by, by the same token, then why couldn't we just raise the pay of a president unless he objected. Well, I'll repeat what I said. It seems, this, to, be, it this seems like to be a total does violation not, of the do, do, This legislation as drafted does not increase or decrease the salary. It would withhold it, and if the president felt that was a violation, he himself uh, that, would have to challenge it. But we have some responsibility in this body to actually um, pass laws that are constitutional. It would. If there was a shutdown, and if on a per diem basis his salary was decreased, why isn't that just de facto a violation of the Constitution? Because we're not changing, diminishing the salary. But you are. It's only of you in are. the case of, a, of an extraordinary event, a government shutdown. The Constitution and doesn't so say I think extraordinary events. The senator can vote against this if he thinks that it's. Not it, my question. But, but I'm just, is, I'll repeat what I said. We don't diminish his salary. We withhold it during a period of a government shutdown or a failure to raise the debt ceiling. And there's a reason that we do it. It's very rare that we have a government shutdown. But in my view, and in the view of the co-sponsors of this, 
This is a major function of our, of our body and of the president to avert a government shutdown. And we don't think it's fair to treat people differently than others. And if other federal employees are going to get their pay cut and your Social Security recipients don't get their checks, we think that Congress and the president ought to have a bite taken out of their pay as well. I don't disagree with anything the senator is saying, but how do you get it be like reducing a judge's salary? Uh, the Constitution specifically prohibits that. You say it's not reducing, but of course it is. If you say we were shut down five days, take uh, whatever percentage five days is of the president's annual salary, you withhold it, you're not going to give it back when the, when the uh, uh, government comes back into, uh, into uh, service, so you have decreased his salary. I'm not suggesting not doing it for the Congress, but I don't see how, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of example that we set if we pass a piece of legislation which on the face of it violates the Constitution. I'm not talking about members of Congress. I mean, as I said, last time we had a shutdown, I took whatever it was my amount of being, and I added it to the thousands and thousands of dollars I give every year to, to charity. I added it to that. But in this case, you go against Article 2 by decreasing the president's salary. I, no, we do not. We say of course you do. We, are not, we are not changing a penny of the president's pay. What we are saying is, in the event of a government shutdown, he will be treated the same way other federal employees are treated, and he'll be treated the same way that we are treated. Now, if he determines that he wants to challenge this in a court of we hope we don't ever face this, so we are not in any way changing a salary. We hope to never have to use this. Is the saying that we set the right example by passing a bill which on the face of it violates the Constitution, but it's okay unless somebody challenges it? I... No, I'm not. I'll say again what I said. I'll reiterate it, uh, which is this. We do not increase or decrease the president's pay. It stays at the level. Days. Can I finish? I mean, I, I let you talk. Now I think I have a turn. I don't have the legal degree. My friend has. It's common sense. It seems to me it's a question of fairness that those of us who are responsible for keeping this government open, okay, I'll just finish this thought, keeping this government open, if we fail to do that, we ought to be punished. Now, I'm going to make a unanimous consent request at this time, and I understand there's objection on the other side or maybe on our side at this point. I would suggest the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Kaka. Phone call be dispensed with. Senator from California, okay. without objection. I've just been told that a Republican colleague uh, objects to this. I don't understand why. I don't think it's a constitutional objection. I don't know the reason. So but the I would Senator hope is out of time. I would ask unanimous consent to make this request. With that, Senate? the Senator from Louisiana. On behalf of Senator Coburn, I object. Objection is heard. Madam President, I ask, uh, I note the absence of a quorum. I note the absence of a quorum. The Senator does not have enough time under her control to suggest the absence of a quorum. Madam President. The Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I rise in strong support of the Toomey Vitter Amendment, which we will vote on in the series of two votes starting at 5 p.m. The idea behind the Toomey Vitter Amendment is very simple. It says that if we ever reach the debt ceiling, that the government as a top priority, first priority, will use revenue to pay two things. First of all, proper interest payments on our U.S. government debt. 
and secondly, Social Security checks to seniors. And Madam President, the, the motivation behind this amendment is simple. First of all, those two things should be legitimately top priority. No one should want the U.S. government to default on its debt, and <clears throat> no one should want the stoppage immediately or, or any time of Social Security checks to seniors. So first of all, it's legitimate to rank those two functions as an absolute top priority. And the second motivation behind this amendment, Madam President, is to take some of the scare tactics and hysteria out of this debate. Too many people, in my opinion, Madam President, have been saying if we ever reach the debt ceiling the next day, all Social Security checks will stop. All payments will stop on U.S. Treasury bills on government debt. That is not true. There's no reason it has to be true. And this amendment, when passed into law, will ensure that it's not true and will ensure that we look at the situation with focus and calmness, not hysteria and scare tactics. And Madam President, the goal I'm certainly for, I know Senator Toomey, my distinguished colleague from Pennsylvania, certainly for, is not that we default on our debt, not that we reach the debt ceiling, but it is that we take strong, responsible action well ahead of any threatened event like that to put us on a fiscally sustainable path. Just this morning, Madam President, both Senator Toomey and I were in a hearing of the Senate Banking Committee, and the witness, the only witness, was Ben Bernanke, Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. And Chairman Bernanke said several things directly pertinent to this discussion very clearly. First of all, he said, we are on a fiscally unsustainable path. Our budget situation is absolutely unsustainable. Second, he said that that is the biggest long-term threat to our economy, the biggest threat. And third, he said that although it's a long-term problem, it could create a short-term crisis. It could create a crisis that could hit immediately at any time. And so we need to act, and we need to act strongly. I'd be happy to uh, yield time to the distinguished senator from Pennsylvania. Madam President. Madam President. The senator from California. Madam President, I just want to say that I object to the vitter to me, Bill. I'm not going to pay China bef before senator I has, pay people. has no time. I ask Your, unanimous the consent. The senator's time has expired. I ask unanimous consent that the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee be discharged. The senator's time has expired. I ask expired. unanimous consent to speak, to make a unanimous consent. Madam President, I think I control is, the floor is, and I yield to the senator from Pennsylvania. Is there objection to uh, I would like to. Is there objection to the senator's yes, there request is. for unanimous consent I object. to make parliamentary inquiry? Consensus. Could I? The ask? objection is heard. Parliamentary inquiry. I want an answer, please, to my question. Can people object to an unanimous consent request without saying who they are? Number one, and number two, what is the parliamentary procedure here? The senator objects. Senator from Louisiana objected in his own behalf to an extension of time to the senator from California. The senator from Louisiana objected to the unanimous consent request on behalf of the senator from Oklahoma, Senator Coburn. The senator from Louisiana objected to the extension of the unanimous consent request for additional time on his own behalf. From Oklahoma, Senator Coburn, that objects to the bill that we have that would say we don't get paid in the case of a shutdown. Is that correct? Senator Coburn is objecting to that. That is the chair's understanding from all time remaining is under control of the minority. All time remaining is under control of the minority. Thank you. From Pennsylvania. The senator from Pennsylvania. Thank you very much, Madam President. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Senator Vitter for uh, yielding his time and for his help on this effort. Listen, I just want to be very clear. First of all, I'm not aware of anybody in this body or um, anybody I know that uh, wants to see a government shutdown. Uh, I'm not aware of anybody that wants to see the disruption that would result from failing to raise the debt ceiling when at the appropriate time. But I also feel very strongly that it's critical that we take this opportunity 
to begin to address the structural problems that we have. Uh, the fact is we have a burden of debt right now that is costing us jobs in this country today. The uncertainty that it creates, the cost of financing this, the question of whether and for how long we can roll this over, the extent to which inflation becomes a problem, all of these risks factors are already weighing on our economy and our ability to create jobs now. For the future, it's an even bigger risk. And so Senator Vitter and I have taken this step so that we can have an honest discussion about how we're going to bring this spending under control, the process reforms we're going to make so that we can hopefully get off this unsustainable path and get on a sustainable trajectory so that we can have the economic ultimately what this measure is all about. And it simply says without having raised it first, and let's face it, we've been there before. This has happened in the past. In the last 20 years, it's happened on several occasions. So it's entirely possible, despite uh, the best efforts uh, of, of those of us who want to avoid it, it's possible it could happen again. And if it were to happen again, we want to make sure that we have no default on our debt, that interest is paid, and that Social Security checks go to their recipients as they should. There will be plenty of resources from ongoing tax revenue to make sure that that happens, and anything less would be very irresponsible. So I would urge my colleagues to vote in favor of this amendment. Time is, all time has expired. The As for the A's and A's on the uh, Lady Grassley, Kyle, at all manages the Is there a sufficient second? There is a sufficient second. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso. Mr. Balkus. Mr. Beckage. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bingaman. Mr. Blumenthal. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown in Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates, Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Coons, Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Ensign, Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley, Mrs. Hagen, Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison, Mr. Inhoff, Mr. Inoue, Mr. Isaacson, Mr. Joe Hands, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle, Ms. Landrew. Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain,
Mrs. McCaskill. That's it. Mr. McConnell. You're right. You're Mr. Menendez. All right. Mr. Merkley. Ms. Mikulski. Mr. Moran. Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune. Thank you. Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative. Boxer, Casey, Cochran, Grassley, Inhofe, Leahy, Schumer, Shaheen, Stabenow, and Vitter. No senator voted in the negative.
Mr. Isaacson, aye. Mr. Warner, aye. Mr. Durbin, aye. Mr. Chambliss, aye. Mr. Toomey, aye. Mr. Paul, aye. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, aye. Mr. Conrad, aye. To Nelson, Nebraska, aye. Mr. Cornyn, aye. <laughs> Mr. Franken, aye. Mr. Ensign, aye. Mr. Johans, aye. Ms. Collins, Ms. Collins, aye. Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blumenthal, aye. Mr. Coates, Mr. Coates, aye. Mr. Sessions, Mr. Sessions, aye. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, aye. Mr. Tester, Mr. Tester, aye. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, aye. Mr. Levin, Mr. Levin, aye. Mr. Corker, aye. Mrs. Murray, aye. Mrs. Hagan, 
Mrs. Hagan, aye. Mr. Coburn, aye. Mr. Menendez, Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Kyle, aye. Mr. Luger, Mr. Luger, aye. Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye. Mr. Lieberman, aye. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, aye. Mr. Rubio. Mr. Rubio, aye. Mr. Bozeman, aye. Mr. No Way, aye. Mr. Moran, Mr. Moran, aye. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell? Ms. Cantwell, aye. Mr. Brown of Ohio, aye. Mr. Carey? Mr. Carey, aye. Mr. Hoven, aye. Mr. Sanders, aye. Mr. Wyden? Mr. Wyden, aye. Mr. Alexander? Mr. Alexander, aye. Mr. Crapo, aye. Mr. Bennett, aye. Mr. Dement? Mr. Dement, aye. Ms. Ayot. Ms. Ayot. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Kirk, aye. Mr. Bingaman, aye. Mr. Baucus, Mr. Baucus, aye. Mr. Wicker, aye. Mr. Carden, aye. Mr. McCain. Mr. McCain, aye. Mrs. McCaskill, Mrs. McCaskill, aye. Ms. Landrew, aye. Mr. Udall, Mr. Udall of Colorado, aye. Mr. Udall of New Mexico, aye. Mr. Webb, Mr. Webb, aye. Ms. Klobuchar, aye. Mr. Coons, aye. Mr. Blunt, aye. Mr. Enzi, aye. Hey, you Taking a shortcut there? <laughs> Mr. Hatch. 
Mr. Hatch, aye. Mr. Manchin, aye. Mr. Nelson of Florida, aye. Mr. Harkin, aye. Mrs. Gillibrand, aye. Ms. Snow? Ms. Snow, aye. Mr. Whitehouse, aye. Mr. Barrasso, aye. Mr. Carper, aye. Mr. Thune, aye. Mr. Beckage, aye. Mr. Graham, aye. Mrs. Hutchison, Mrs. Hutchison, aye. Mr. Rish, aye. Mr. Pryor, aye. Ms. Murkowski, Ms. Murkowski, aye. Mr. Portman, Mr. Portman, aye. Mrs. Feinstein, aye. Ms. Murkowski, Ms. Murkowski, no. Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rockefeller, aye. Mr. Lautenberg, aye. Mr. Merkley, Mr. Cole, aye. Mr. Reed of Nevada, aye. Mr. Shelby, no. Mr. McConnell,
Any senators wishing to vote or change their vote? Doesn't look like it. On this, the ayes are 97, the nays are 2. The amendment is agreed to. Senator, lay it on the table. On the table. Without objection. Mr. President. Senator from Montana, the Senate is not in order. Please take your conversations out of the Senate. The Senate will come to order. The Senate is not in order. The Senator from Montana. Mr. President, I ask, I ask consent for one minute for each side to explain this next amendment. Equally divided. One minute each side. Is there objection? Without objection. Mr. President, uh, the next amendment is the uh, bitter amendment 112 which essentially says that the United States must pay um, uh, uh, its interest debts and Social Security benefits uh, before it makes uh, uh, any other uh, government obligations. I think it's a bad idea. Uh, that brings economic chaos to our country. If we default, we default. If, uh, just because um, bondholders in China get priority over our troops overseas or get priority over tax refunds doesn't mean we're not in default. Besides, it's bad policy anyway. Um, that this amendment would bring chaos if we ever were to get to the point of, of un being able, unable to raise our debt. It would be chaos to say we pay the Chinese bondholders first before we pay anybody else. That's the wrong thing to do. I don't think we want to get in a situation where we're going to tell American people that they're second to, um, to uh, foreign investors. I strongly urge that this amendment be defeated. At the appropriate time, I'll move to table the amendment. Mr. President, Will you send? Senator from Pennsylvania. Mr. President, uh, if I could take the minute uh, to uh, uh, rebut my colleague. Uh, first of all, it's true it would be very disruptive and there would be some chaos if we had a government shutdown or if we uh, eventually failed to raise the debt limit. This amendment, of course, doesn't cause that. This amendment, in fact, is designed precisely to prevent the kind of chaos that might otherwise ensue by simply ensuring that under no circumstances whatsoever, with the United States government default on its debt. And I think we all agree. The Senate will come to order. Uh, thank you. I, I think we all agree that the last thing we should ever tolerate would be a situation in which the United States government would default on our debt. The chaos that would result from that would be devastating. And so this is an amendment that says, uh, in the event that the debt limit is not raised when we reach it, and by the way, we've been there before, so it's not inconceivable, that we'd make sure that we under no circumstances would default on the, the debt. And because Senator Vitter offered a, uh, uh, an amendment to this amendment, essentially, the merger of these amendments ensures that Social Security payments would also go out. Um, by the way, there is more than sufficient revenue from ongoing taxes to ensure that that could be done. And so in the interest of avoiding the chaos of an actual default, I think this absolutely should occur. And by the way, I think it's also important to note that a majority of all the debt issued by this government is held by Americans. They're held by uh, senior citizens who live in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and who have saved their whole life and invested that savings in U.S. Treasury securities. And I think it's very important that we send the message to them that even if we're not able to get our work done, and, uh, and raise this debt limit, as I hope we will at the appropriate time, we certainly would not default on the debt that, the, that they hold. And I'll yield the balance of my time. Senator from Montana. Mr. President, I move to table the bitter for Toomey Amendment number 112 as modified and ask for the A's and A's on my motion to table. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka, Mr. Alexander, Ms. Ayotte, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Baucus.
Mr. Baggage. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman. Mrs. Boxer. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr. Ms. Cantwell. Mr. Cardin. Mr. Carper. Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran. Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad. Mr. Coons. Mr. Corker. Mr. Cornyn. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Ensign. Mr. Enzi. Mrs. Feinstein. Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand. Mr. Graham. Mr. Grassley. Mrs. Hagen. Mr. Harkin. Mr. Hatch. Mr. Hoven. Mrs. Hutchison. Mr. Inhofe. Mr. Inouye. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Johans. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. Mr. Carey. Mr. Kirk. Ms. Klobuchar.
Mr. Cole. Mr. Kyle. Ms. Landrew, Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy, Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger. Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch, Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Chester, Mr. Thune, Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Vitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker, Mr. Wyden, Senators voting in the affirmative. Baucus, Begich, Bennett, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Boxer, Brown of Ohio, Cantwell, Cardin, Carper, Casey, Conrad, Coons, 
Durbin, Feinstein, Franken, Gillibrand, Hagen, Harkin, Inouye, Johnson of South Dakota, Carey, Klobuchar, Cole, Landrieu, Lautenberg, Leahy, Lieberman, Manchin, Menendez, Merkley, Mikulski, Nelson of Nebraska, Nelson of Florida, Pryor, Reed of Nevada, Rockefeller, Sanders, Schumer, Shaheen, Tester, Udall of Colorado, Udall of New Mexico, Warner, Webb, Whitehouse, Wyden. Senators voting in the negative. Alexander, Ayotte, Barrasso, Blunt, Bozeman, Brown of Massachusetts, Burr, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Cochran, Collins, Corker, Cornyn, Crapo, DeMint, Ensign, Enzi, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Hoven, Hutchison, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Kirk, Kyle, Lee, Luger, McCain, McConnell, Moran, Markowski, Paul, Portman, Risch, Roberts, Rubio, Sessions, Shelby, Snow, Thune, Toomey, Vitter, Wicker. Ms. Stabenow, Ms. Stabenow, aye. Mr. Inhofe, Mr. Inhofe, no. Mrs. Murray, Mrs. Murray, aye. Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, aye.